Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells and welcome to another sales update video. These sales took place from August 15th to September 14th, 2019 and they are from my eBay store called Atlanta Golf Shop. I started selling on eBay in 2003 and over the years my business has evolved in many different ways but I use this store as a teaching store because I know a lot of you want to see how things are done how I price things how long it takes for items to sell all that good stuff so this is my eBay feedback page where it shows the date I open my account so that you will know that I am experienced and I'm out there doing this every day just like you and I have been since 2003. Now as far as the numbers shown in this video some of you have been commenting that you think I am not calculating the profit correctly but I'm gonna send you to a video the link is below that explains how I calculate profit and just a couple of things to remember that shipping discounts can be up to 40 percent especially on larger items so if the profit doesn't seem right remember that's added in there so that's a little bit of a, a bonus when you are calculating profit so if you have any questions about how I'm getting these numbers it's explained in great detail in this video called Know Your Numbers, Quick Bookkeeping Tip Number One. You can just go watch that video and it will explain everything. Now a couple of givens before I get into this. Previously this year I had been tracking watchers and views on my items and we've pretty much come to the conclusion that neither one of these matter. An item can sell within minutes, hours, days, months, or years. It does not matter how many watchers you have on something, so don't get sidetracked on that. And uh, those statistics really, I think, are not related to sales at all. So I'm not tracking that anymore, and I don't even look at it anymore because in my book it doesn't matter. Okay, so I will say that this month was so much better than last month, and there's a couple of... Uh, special situations in here so let's go ahead and start going through these items this is an altered state dress I paid four dollars and fifty cents for this it sold for thirty dollars profit was twenty one dollars and fifteen cents this was sold on best offer this Ann Taylor skirt sold for full price I paid six dollars and thirty five cents I took an offer of nineteen profit was ten ninety one this Ann Taylor skirt sold on best offer I paid two dollars and nine cents sold for twenty two ninety seven profit was eighteen fifty three this is a soft surroundings bra top I paid four dollars and seventeen cents took an offer of seventeen dollars profit was eleven thirty four this is an anthropology brand called Sundays in Brooklyn I paid a dollar sixty for this took a twenty dollar offer profit was thirteen dollars and one cent and I do shop all different places sometimes it's a church thrift store sometimes it's Goodwill sometimes it's a one location little hole in the wall thrift store sometimes it's a huge outlet I do not have the bins here but we have something called Park Avenue thrift that has an outlet that stuff is really cheap there so I'm kind of all over the place with that. I don't do a lot of garage sales simply because I just don't like them. <laughs> um, it's been my experience that sometimes you can spend all day driving around and not find as much stuff as you can find with an effort of like two or three hours in a thrift store. So I'm all about optimizing my time and I just prefer a thrift store because it's organized you know how much everything costs it's air conditioned and heated they have a nice bathroom all those kind of things so I'm more of a thrift store gal okay this was a cutter and buck men's jacket I paid seven dollars and forty two cents for this it sold on best offer of twenty profit was eleven ninety nine 
This was a pair of Carhartt jeans. I found, I think it was 15 pairs of these at my unofficial trading post, AKA the trash area at my apartments. And I found a stack of 15 of these, all the same size. So, heck yeah, I took those and got them all listed. And so I paid $0 for this. It sold for $18, making my profit $17.38. This is a Chico's Traveler's Top. I paid $3.15. It sold for $29.97. Profit was $23.52. This is an Ex Officio Top. I paid $6.35. It sold for full price of $29.97. Profit was $21.05. This was a Morona, which is a Target brand, bathing suit top, a tankini top. I paid $3.18 for this. It sold for $18.97. Profit was $14.01. So there's a bunch of things I want to tell you about this listing. First of all, spell check got me on the title. Autocorrect. It was supposed to be Morona, but it changed to Verona with a V, and I didn't even notice it. And it didn't matter. It sold anyway. I bought this even though it was a Target brand because of the style and the colors and the pattern. I've just sold things like this before and I thought, you know, this is nice. Someone's going to like this. This is a popular halter style with the padded bra, the tankini top. So, it sold for full price. I profit I profited 14.01 on this item which goes to show you that sometimes it's about the style, the color, the pattern more than the brand. So yes, you can make money selling Target brands on eBay. Just you have to factor in all those different things. Think about it and look at comps before you just throw every Target brand in your cart. Um, you know, selling on eBay is a learned skill and after a while you get an eye for it and you just know because You've sold something like that before and you just have a gut feeling and you go with it. Okay, this is a Chico's Traveler's Top, size 3. Uh, it's kind of a jacket, open front cardigan. I paid $5 for this, took a best offer of $24.97. Profit was $16.35. This was an Athleta split skirt. I paid $1.85 for this. Took a best offer of 14, profit was 10.99. Okay, this one was an experiment, not because it was a handbag, but because of how much I paid for it. This is a Fossil Morgan style large traveler crossbody handbag. It was leather, and normally I don't buy handbags, especially higher end ones, but this one isn't necessarily higher end. But the price on this was $20 came out to be $21.60 plus tax and I took a chance. Normally I buy stuff for under $5 so I'm like let me see what happens here and I put $100 on it and sent out a bunch of offers and it just kind of sat there. So I got an offer of $45 and walked away with profit of $18.12. So I still came out ahead. Um, it does kind of pain me to pay that much for an item but for the sake of growing my business I do these experiments to see how things work out and I encourage you to do the same thing. Your mindset should be can I at least make what I paid for it plus about 20% to cover your fees and if you think so then give it a try. Okay, this is a J. Jill sweater. I paid $3.18 for this. It sold on best offer for $18. Profit was $11.43. This was a Lennox ceramic measuring cup set. And this was actually the thing in this little thrift store grab bag that I, this was the reason I bought it. Was I could see the measuring cups in there. And if you'll remember, this little dragon guy was hiding in there and he sold for, I think it was around $100. So that was a little bonus. But these measuring cups are why I bought that grab bag because it was what I could see. So 
my cost on that was a dollar fifty I took a $25 offer profit was 1978 and it was missing one there should have been four of these measuring cups in the set but there was only three and so I still did well on that for the price and for it not even being a complete set as far as what was in that bag the profit on the dragon was eighty dollars and seventy one cents the profit on the measuring cups was nineteen dollars and seventy eight cents making my total profit on that little grab bag of stuff over a hundred dollars so again another experiment you gotta keep trying new stuff because sometimes it works out okay this is a Chico's Travelers jacket I paid four dollars and twenty cents for this it sold for full price of twenty nine ninety seven profit was twenty three eighty one and thanks to Carol down in Florida who is uh, one of my viewers and is also in the premium group she actually bought this <laughs> that was a name I recognized on the package so thanks for that Carol I appreciate it okay this was another item that was free it was at my unofficial trading post in my apartments a box of Royal Brights business cards brand new and I did open the box to make sure everything was as it was supposed to be it was there was no nothing stained or no problems in there sold for $17.97 which was full price and my profit on that free item was $16.68 this is a Tory Burch top. I paid $4, sold for $30, profit was $22.76. This is a Missook top. I paid $4.30 for this. It sold for $57.77 on best offer. My profit was $45.99. This item was a little bit different than any other Missook I have sold. It was sequined and more of an evening type item. Uh, formal and I really didn't know how to price it because there weren't very many of them on eBay at all so I think this might be either a limited line that she did or maybe it's something new that there's just not a lot of yet out there in thrift stores so I priced it at $69.97 and I got a $57 offer within 24 hours so I took it you know for that kind of profit I'm not gonna wait around for another 10 bucks so I was happy okay this is a Chico's Travelers maxi skirt I paid three dollars and eighteen cents sold for twenty dollars and ninety nine cents profit was sixteen dollars and ninety two cents this was a hundred percent cashmere sweater men size 2 extra large I paid four dollars and thirty cents took a best offer of fifty Profit was $38.83, and this here was also a quick flip. It sold in about two days. And this was another one of those where it, it just, you don't know how to price it sometimes. It was close enough for me. I wasn't going to wait around for another 20 bucks. I had the buyer right then, and they were totally happy. Maybe if I had waited a couple of more months, closer to Christmas or uh, further into winter I might have gotten more but hey there's plenty more where this came from so I'm all about that quick quicker flip now much more so than I used to be okay Ann Taylor dress I paid three dollars and eighteen cents sold it for twenty two fifty on best offer profit was seventeen oh nine this is a J Jill linen top I paid six dollars and thirty five cents took an offer of sixteen fifty profit was eight fifty six this is a pair of New Balance shoes I paid six dollars and thirty five cents took an offer for thirty profit was twenty three eighty five this mug I paid a dollar for this sold for twelve dollars profit was ten dollars and one cent this is an Eddie Bauer top I paid two dollars and twelve cents for this sold for twenty four ninety seven full price profit was nineteen ninety five this is another altered state item I paid six dollars and thirty five cents sold for twenty two profit was fourteen thirty five 
This is a Jones New York skirt, new with tags, $109 tag. I'm surprised I didn't get more for this. I kept holding out and lowering the price, but sometimes it doesn't matter if an item has a $100 tag on it. If it's not what somebody wants, um, they're not going to pay it. And some of these house brands, I guess you can call them Macy's house brands like Charter Club, uh, Jones New York is one of them. It's just, you don't know. Maybe if it had been a larger size or a plus size or a different material. So sometimes you take what you can get and move on. So my profit on this item was $13.76. This is a pair of Bernie Mev shoes. I paid $6.35, sold for full price, $42.97. Profit was $30.66. This is a Johnny Was embroidered top or beach cover up. I paid $4.30, took an offer of $68. Profit was $55.52, and this actually had a flaw on it. I put there right under the condition notes good pre owned condition, one quarter inch white mark, see photos. And in my photos on eBay, I did include two images here showing the defect you know where it was on the item it was kind of on the front lower area so like down by the sleeve and you know put a little circle around it there just to be very upfront about hey this item isn't perfect and it's still sold for $68 so my profit on that was $55 on a defective item I said all of that to tell you if you have something, you get it home, it has a defect on it, just list it anyway because there's a buyer for everything. And you've already bought it, you already have it, you might as well list it and at least try to get what you paid back out of the item. So I didn't see this mark on this item until I got home. It was like, oh well, it's going up for sale anyway, so we'll see what happens. Okay, this is a Express brand turquoise chain belt. I paid $3.18, sold for full price of $29.97. Profit was $23.59. And what's interesting, the next item that sold just a few minutes later to a different person, a different chain belt, $3.18. I took an offer of $25. Profit was $18.20. One of these went to Texas. One of them went to Colorado. I bought these at the same time probably six months ago and both of them sold on the same day to different people. So I was like, wow, what's going on with chain belts all of a sudden? That was weird. Okay, this is a Chico's size 3 skirt. I paid $4 for this. It sold for $25. Profit was $19.56. This is an Auburn Tigers medical dental scrub. I have had this thing forever. I think three years maybe. I paid $4 for it. Finally sold it for $13.97. Profit was $8.79. And scrub tops used to be a good seller for me, but I leave them now. I just, I'm not seeing those prices anymore. Maybe because too many people are selling them now, or they're just not as unique as they used to be, or they're easier to get, or whatever. But uh, that's one of those things that over the evolution of my business, I just don't even look at them anymore because they don't sell for enough for my preference. Okay, this was another experiment for me as I try to branch out and do different products. A set of Pottery Barn throw pillows. These were linen embroidered and filled with goose down. I paid $4.20 for the set. They sold for $37.20 on best offer. Profit was $29.01. Super easy to ship, easy to photograph. So I'm going to start looking at more of these throw pillows because they have been working out pretty well for me. Okay, this is a Land's End dress. I paid $3.70 for this. It sold for full price of $29.97. Profit was $22. Chico's So Slimming Pants. I paid $6.35, took an offer of $22.50, profit was $13.96, and I am almost out of the pant selling business. Um, I'm working through my stock that I had bought over the years, and I just don't enjoy selling these anymore. 
I don't enjoy looking at them in the store. I don't enjoy photographing them. I'm just not into it. It doesn't excite me. So I'm moving on and just kind of taking whatever offers to move those out of my inventory. Okay, this is a White House Black Market cocktail dress. I paid $7.40 for this, took an offer of $38, profit was $24.72. This is a Ralph Lauren size 8 petite blazer. And I said that to stress that don't get all caught up and everything has to be plus size to make money because that is not true. The smaller sizes sell just as well. I paid $4.20 for this. It sold for $33. Profit was $25.40. This is a Chico's top. I paid $6.35. Sold for full price of $34.97. Profit was $24.71. This Ann Taylor dress sold for full price. I paid $7.42. It sold for $32.97. Profit was $20.89. And the person who bought this asked a question about it. And before I could even go pull the item and answer them, they just bought it for full price. So while I do try to be as quick as possible in getting answers, sometimes that happens and the buyer just wants to get it in the mail or they need it right away for an event or whatever. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, they bought it. So... I stand by my return policy. If it doesn't work out, they can send it back. Okay, this is a Chico's Traveler size 2 cardigan. And um, this was one I actually had claimed for myself and put in my closet. And I'm going to start doing that now with more items because every time I do that, the item sells. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I'm going somewhere tonight. Let me see what I have in my inventory that I can wear. And I'll start wearing it and then it sells. So... Maybe I need to, to do this business in the reverse and just buy a whole bunch of stuff for myself and then put it on eBay and it'll sell faster. I don't know. I paid $5 for this, took an offer of $25. Profit was $17.48. This is a Trim Shaper brand swimsuit. It was new with tag and the hygienic liner. I paid $5, took an offer of $40. Profit was $29.78. This is a J. Crew top. This is one of those that had like 300 views within a couple of months and 14 watchers. I have no idea why everybody was watching this item because it's not super unusual or rare or anything. And I ended it and started it over again after sending offers on it like every day for a month. And then somebody just bought it for full price. So that proves to me that when something is listed and it's getting a lot of views and has a lot of watchers and it doesn't sell, that it's getting pushed down in search because it sold almost immediately when I started it over again. And by that I mean I ended the listing, then I did a sell similar to start it over as a fresh listing, changed a few things in the title and made sure all the item specifics were checked um, just to refresh it. So I paid $2.12 for this. It sold for $29.97. Profit was $24.48. This is a pair of Clark's shoes. I paid $4.20. Took an offer of $30. Profit was $21.53. This is an O'Neill men's flannel shirt. I paid $3.18. I took an offer of $20. Profit was $18.00 and 20 cents. Okay, so we are almost through the month here, but I went on vacation. Imagine that. This was the first vacation I have taken with my kids who are now 25 and 23 that was not work related or family related, like visiting people, going for a holiday. Like we actually took a vacation. This the last time we did this was in 2013, so six years um, since we had had actual vacation and just went somewhere for pure pleasure and to get away from everything. So um, I'm going to show you the sales that happened while I was on vacation and then tell you how I handled it while I was away. So 
Uh, there will also be some lovely photos of my vacation coming after I tell you about the sales. Okay, so this was a Brooks Brothers dress. I paid $3.15, took an offer of $22, profit was $16.70. Orvis men's flannel shirt, I paid $6.35, it sold for $32.97, which was full price, profit was $24.14. This is a J. Crew long cardigan sweater. It's kind of heavy, so this is going to really keep somebody warm this summer. I'm um, sorry, this winter. <laughs> I paid $3.18. It sold for $20. Profit was $14.51. This is an Athleta plaid shirt. The line is called Lumber Jill instead of Lumberjack. I paid $6.30. It sold for $22.50. Profit was $13.97. And I will say on Athleta, that's another one of those brands that used to sell for a lot more than it does now. I think there's just more of it and more people are putting it on eBay. So I've had this a little while. I wouldn't pay that for it now. Um, Athleta, my new rule is $4 or less because I was seeing prices in the 30s and 40s, but I'm just not seeing that anymore on the Athleta stuff I find. Okay, this was a Carmen Mark Valvo top, and this was an oops. I paid six dollars and thirty-five cents. I took an offer of fifteen. Um, so note to self, I meant to take an offer of twenty-five, but probably not a great idea to be accepting offers and drinking frozen alcoholic concoctions on the beach <laughs> um, that's what happened so after this one I decided I'm just not gonna try to take offers while I'm relaxing um, my profit was seven dollars and thirty nine cents so you know not the end of the world but uh, that was kind of an oops okay this is a J. Jill poncho new with tag and I thought this would sell for a lot more but I've had it almost a year so I let it go for 25 I paid six dollars and 35 cents for it profit was 1503 this is a lucky brand top I paid two dollars and 18 cents took a ten dollar offer profit was seven dollars and 21 cents this was another one that uh, I'm just not seeing the prices on lucky that I used to see either it just depends on what it is at one point I was just buying lucky every time I'd see it and now I'm going to be more selective this is an Orvis blazer I paid three dollars and 47 cents sold for 22 profit was 16 this is a Michael Kors dress I paid three dollars for this I took an offer of $19.99 profit was $15.09 this I have had forever Chico Zenergy jacket. I paid a dollar sixty for this. It sold for fifteen. Profit was twelve dollars and sixteen cents. This Lands End dress. I paid four dollars and thirty cents. It sold for thirty dollars. Profit was twenty one dollars and forty three cents. And this sold in about a week. REI cargo skirt. I paid three dollars and eighteen cents. Took an offer of 12 profit was eight dollars and 30 cents the problem with this one was i didn't realize this till i got it home but it apparently had a longer piece at the bottom that zipped onto it because at the hemline was like half a zipper and so the item wasn't complete but somebody still bought it okay this item got returned and then it sold again so that tory birch top that I paid four dollars for I took a twenty-five dollar offer this time profit was eighteen dollars and thirty cents this is a Land's End swimsuit I paid four dollars it sold for nineteen twenty profit was thirteen dollars and twenty six cents Jones New York dress I paid seven dollars and forty one cents it sold for thirty profit was eighteen thirty two this is a Trina Turk swimsuit I paid four dollars I took an offer of 35 profit was twenty seven dollars and eleven cents Talbot's skirt this was a hundred percent wool and a really pretty pattern which is why I picked it up as well as a larger size size 16 petite 
I paid $2.62, sold for 30. Profit was $24.17. These are Wolverine men's boots and they looked a little bit more rough when I got them home than they did in the store as that happens sometimes. So I'm still okay with what I paid for them, but they didn't sell for as high as I thought they would because once I got them home in the light taking pictures, you can see they're kind of uh, dirty there on the toes. I paid $4.30, took an offer of $30, profit was $23.04. This was a cool looking item. I have never sold this brand before, but it just looked cool. It looked like somebody would buy these. The brand is uh, Coconuts by Matisse Embroidered Clogs. I paid $4.30, took a $35 offer, profit was $25.88. I paid $7 for this. It sold for full price of $42.97. Profit was $29.17. Okay, so this item was another one of those that had like 400 views and 18 watchers. And I know that was some of my YouTube audience and people who watch my store that were just seeing what would happen here. So after about six weeks, I took the listing down, put it back out there again, and it sold within a week for full price. So again, that proves that just because you have a lot of watchers doesn't mean people are going to buy it. It could be other sellers watching your item. And items that have racked up a lot of views over time are not appearing in search because this keeps happening when I end things with a lot of views and watchers and start them over sometimes they'll sell immediately okay and finally this is a free people top I paid four dollars and thirty cents for this it sold for thirty dollars profit was twenty three oh four okay returns I mentioned the Tory Burch item uh, top was returned and there was also a Speedo swimsuit. Now, one thing I did this month, in addition to being on vacation, was I stopped doing free returns because I wanted to see if that matters, if it made a difference on my sales. So one of these items was a free return, one wasn't. Um, when you change over, anything that has sold under the previous policy, uh, you have to honor that. So even though I changed over one of these items had sold when the item was free returns so I had to honor that so there's my totals as far as the items that were returned free return shipping and my total deductions for that was forty eight dollars and sixty cents okay now let's look at the numbers okay here is the overview showing my progress since January of this year number of items sold profit per item and all that information I'm showing you every month so you can see my journey along with this store and then my sales between August 15th and September 14th and you can see there's an ebb and flow some days are better than others some days they're nothing that's totally normal if we look at those numbers I sold 64 items profit per item was twenty dollars and thirty nine cents so it's coming back up again it was as low as sixteen dollars and eighty seven cents per item in June and August was just a terrible month so here you can see how the numbers work and if you have a bad month you have a bad month my increase from the previous month was 67 percent and you just have to wait these things out and know that it'll get better don't focus on I'm not getting any sales don't focus on that keep working towards the future don't get stuck in analysis paralysis trying to figure out why I had all kinds of people giving me ideas for why August was so slow and I really don't even care to know because I know from experience that that's just gonna happen and it doesn't even matter why because I can't do anything about it I do the same things every month 
I find great items, I get them listed, I take good pictures, I send out offers, I consider every offer manually, you know, all the things I do. So people were saying, oh, you know, Prime Day was in there, Amazon Prime Day, where some kind of special deal and so, you know, nobody was buying on eBay. Well, I don't believe that. Or uh, everybody was busy with back to school. I don't believe that. You know, people buy stuff all year. So you can either justify it or you can just ignore it and keep going. And I just don't want to spend my time trying to figure all that out because I know from experience it will come back. And if we look at this, it did come back. Both stores were up. My Atlanta Golf Store, which is the one y'all see, was up 62.7% compared to the previous month. My second store was up a little bit, but you can see um, there's no real correlation between anything here. It's just a matter of you keep listing, you keep maintaining everything, give good customer service, all those things I talk about, and it will come back. You have to have faith in the process. And the longer you do this, the more faith you will have in the process. New people get very frustrated because they don't see results immediately. And that's because you don't have the experience to draw on and you don't have the confidence to know, hey, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm doing all the right things and sometimes you just have a crappy month. Okay, so here are all the items that sold and they are sorted in order of highest profit to lowest. So if you want to pause the video on each one of these and take a look at all that, you're welcome to do it, but it's everything I just explained. So my subtotal for profit before returns was $1,305.58. Now that's profit. Returns deducted from that brings the grand total of profit from this time period to $1,256.98. And I know, yeah, I'm not making a million dollars doing this, but this is what the average person can do with consistency and persistence and daily effort you can do this and you can do a lot more than this but the reason for these sub sales update videos are you know not to shock you and amaze you and wow you it's just like hey this is the real world of ebay this is what really happens and a thousand bucks a month profit is great that's a lot of money and you can do a lot of things with it so let's go over some observations I sold 15 items at full price or 23% of my total sold items, 49 items on best offer which is 77% so if you're not doing best offer that's definitely a way to increase your sales. Items sold while I was on vacation, 21 items, the amount of sales was $518.63, profit of $369.30 while I was on vacation. So. This is where all that work you've done pays off. You take care of your business all along and it'll take care of you when you want to take a vacation. So that's what I did as far as sales from both stores. I spent the day I got home <laughs> from vacation shipping everything so that's ready to go. And um, you know it's just amazing to me that this is that delayed gratification thing. You work and then you can take a vacation and things continue to sell. Items that were less than $25 uh, sale price, 56 items or 88% of what I sold. So the little things do add up. My cost for those items was $242.57 resulting in $968.22 profit. So whenever you have that little pesky voice in your head that says oh, I don't fool with listing that it's, it's not gonna sell for that much um, the little things add up I made almost a thousand dollars on the profit from items that sold for less than twenty five dollars didn't get much feedback this month I had 64 sales only got 15 feedbacks so 23 percent of buyers 
uh, not necessarily from the sales from this time period, but people just didn't leave much feedback. That's okay. That's normal. Just keep going. Okay, items in my store. The number of items. As of September 14th, I have 445 items. So I'm just showing you that's kind of where I am naturally organically staying is uh, 450 ish um, I'm trying to get to a thousand slowly but surely I think I have a total of 800 between my two stores so I may get there I may not okay what changed during this time period I removed free returns and I didn't see any problem with that I'm just doing an experiment to see if that matters for my business model and I took a vacation from September 7th to the 14th. I did not list any new items. I ended stale items and listed them again using Sell Similar. Okay, here's what I did on my business each day I was on vacation because I didn't completely ignore it. I had set my handling time to five business days so that if anything sold during the time I was gone, um, I wouldn't get, my metrics wouldn't be affected because I would still be shipping within that time period. Anything that sold, I would send a message to the buyers. I had a little cut and paste thing I would do that said, thank you for your purchase. You may not have noticed on this item, the handling day is X. We are on vacation. We will be returning on this date. Your item will be shipped on this date. If this is an issue, please let us know. We'll be glad to refund your money immediately. Nobody asked for a refund. Um, two people answered out of all the things I sold. Only two people answered and they said, hey, no problem. Have a great vacation. So it was not a problem. Um, the next thing I would do is I would change my handling time to one less day and I'm going to show you the video where I explain how to do that in just a minute. Um, I sent out any offers on both my stores and I ended five stale items and then did a sell similar. So just kind of reworked some things, kept in communication with buyers so they wouldn't be upset if their item didn't arrive as quickly as they thought. And this took maybe an hour each day. So get up in the morning, have your coffee, do some stuff on your store, and then off to enjoy the day doing whatever, um, however not accepting or sending offers while drinking alcoholic beverages probably not a great idea okay takeaways from this month free returns had no impact on my sales sales were up 67 percent from the previous month even without adding new items for a week okay now um, let me show you some stuff about my vacation this is where we went on the Gulf Coast the Gulf of Mexico beautiful little place a little island off the coast there um, it's actually a place that is intentionally undeveloped. So where we stayed was a nice little, you know, Airbnb right on the beach. And within walking distance, they had about seven restaurants on the island and you could ride bikes and, um, you know, it was very low key and laid back, which is what we like. So this was my setup every day. <laughs> Um, <laughs> my kids were out there too, but I tended to just sit out there. I just love sitting there and looking at the ocean, watching the dolphins go by. Um, people would walk by, I'd chat with them. I had my cooler there with my, um, whatever I was having that day. On this day, it was just sparkling water, so not super exciting, but, um, just beautiful to sit out there and no crowds, which is what we enjoyed. So, um, you just can't beat that view to, to get away and enjoy the beach. We stayed at a nice little Airbnb, which was really cute. And what I like to do is go out on the beach at sunset and just look and just watch. So this was one night, uh, it was Friday the 13th when we had that beautiful harvest full moon. And um, this was the view to the west where the sun was setting. And it's just you know the sky keeps changing colors and it just keeps getting more and more brilliant and orange and 
you know, pictures just, you can't capture it. It's just so beautiful out there. And that's what I like to do. And so this was the view to the east, waiting for the sun to go down and the moon to come up in the east, because I was all about seeing that full moon over the water. So this sky, this is the same sky, just the other direction. It was pink and purple. And these pictures are not retouched. I didn't do anything with the color. This is exactly the way it is. It's just gorgeous. And the sky just kept getting pink and purple and different shades and, um, you know, reflecting along the shoreline there. And um, it was just so beautiful out there. Just perfect temperature. I think it was 84 degrees with the breeze and everything. And just kept waiting for the moon to pop up. And sure enough, there it is. Just looks gorgeous. And um, showing you all of this just to say, this is why we work so hard for ourselves, so we can enjoy whatever we want to enjoy in life and have the money and the time to do it. So I'm going to give you a little clip here of the whole experience, including the sound. And I showed you all that just to say, don't be afraid to go on vacation and enjoy delayed gratification and just coast, pun intended, coast along on the work you've already done. I worked really hard this year doing a lot of different things and getting all these items built up in my store. And I'm the worst person about walking away from work because I'll put in 8 to 12 hour days every single day for months because I love what I do and I want to build this business but you have to be able to walk away and enjoy life because that's why we do this to enjoy whatever it is that you you are doing this for so you can have the money and the flexibility to do it and I have a link to my video about vacation how to handle your store when you're away on vacation um, so you can check the link below for that information on some suggestions on how to do it okay at the end of every sales update video I give you an update on my premium library so as of September 14th 2019 there are 210 videos 71 hours of education and there is a little confusion out there I keep getting comments regarding selling clothing only 21 videos in this premium library or 10% are about selling clothing um, 189 videos or 90% of what's in there is about other things so this is not just about selling clothing let me give you a quick run through of the table of contents so you will know what's in there and I have a link to that below the video as well. Okay, here's a quick run through of the table of contents of the premium library in case you're wondering what is in there. There's also a link to this below the video so you can print it out and look over it and decide if this is for you. So I update this every week as new things are added so it's always current. We've got a beginner course that is now over four hours of content. If you are brand new, this goes over everything you need to know. You can also download every single one of these videos to your computer and have it for later if you don't want to remain a member, or you can just access them in the premium library as you need them. Next, buying for resale, exactly what it says, how to buy from estate sales, things not to buy that waste your time, how to buy things online to resell. We've got cleaning hacks, collectibles that focuses on Disney items. There's some stuff in here that will blow your mind that I didn't know were collectible. And the more I research this, the more amazed I am. Consumables. This is your health and beauty and your discontinued items, as well as a list of items that are discontinued that sell for high prices. That was updated as of August 2019. And the beauty of this is as I learn about things, I put it in here. 
so that everyone can know. So it's constantly updated and kept current. Then you've got a section called Conquering Your eBay Fears. These are things that are getting in your way that you can easily overcome and be a better seller. We've got Ephemera, several episodes of that, and Frequently Asked Questions. This is where I put the current information, changes on eBay, things that are happening in the eBay world that you may not know about. I'm plugged into this uh, social media all over the place. Not only my own groups, but other groups, YouTube channels, what the eBay community is talking about. I can keep you updated if you don't have time to do that. And then we just go on through all these frequently asked questions. If something is asked two or three times, I usually make a video about it because if people are having questions, I can give you an answer. We've got the index that is organized by keywords in alphabetical order so you can find what you need quickly. You may think, oh, I know she had a video about that, but now I can't remember where it was. So you can find that by using the index. Inventory Connect is where you can buy inventory from other sellers if you don't have good resources, if you're unable to get out and source for physical reasons, or if you just want to buy from somebody who knows what they're doing because you're new and you don't know what to buy to resell. Um, or the other side of that is if you have too much inventory and you want to lot that stuff up and sell it to other sellers. So I've got that whole program going. A whole section on international selling and then a materials section where we've got all kind of resources flowcharts customer response letters when you don't know what to say to somebody these are frequent situations where you may not know how to respond to somebody and I know a lot of you this is your first home business and this may be the first time you have had to interact with customers and you just don't know how to do it. So these documents will help you there. There's a section on photography, all about editing, all about uh, color correction, all about light setup. Um, and it kept very easy and basic so anybody can figure that out. There's a section on research, how to research outside of eBay, free resources for that. So that does happen when you can't find a comp on eBay. Then there's a search engine optimization section and an entire shipping section. While I don't show you how to ship specific items, you can find that very easily on YouTube. I do give you materials and things you can download to help you figure it out on your own. I'm all about teaching you to fish, not just giving you a fish. So, uh, frequently asked questions about shipping, how to do things that are frequent situations. I explain how to do all that. Technology tips. This is for those of you that aren't sure how to use your mobile phone. Like you don't know all the things it can do. And trust me, that is hard to keep up with. Technology changes a lot, but that little phone is full of stuff that can help you work faster and more efficiently. So you may just not know because you don't have anybody to tell you. So this is a fun section for helping you learn more about what your phone can do. Then we've got thrift shopping lists. These are all of those different categories with photos of items as well as what it might sell for, the best case scenario, and then a realistic price so that you can learn by looking at pictures. And uh, these are updated pretty often. You can see the update dates on there. But you can make a notebook, print these out, stick them in your notebook, and study so that you can see these things and learn by the images so that when you're outsourcing and they pop up in front of you, you'll know, oh yeah, that was on that list. I remember that. So it's kind of like a study guide and people are having great success with that. We've got trash to cash, stuff you might be throwing away that's worth money. Uh, trends, these are more about clothing, um, but trends as far as what people are buying and why. And then we've got a whole what to sell section that's broken down by type of item. So this is coffee mugs and medical items and the needlework course and niche item of the month. This could be any kind of thing that is uh, sort of 
new to the scene or you didn't realize people were buying a thing for that reason so those are pretty interesting and then there is what is this and how much does it sell for that's a series where I show you items that are commonly found in thrift stores or at estate sales and maybe you've seen these but you have no idea what that thing is or what it does or how much it sells for so that's a fun one too then we get to the women's clothing section and you can see there uh, just all kinds of different brands clothing selling tips and on and on so didn't mean to bore you with that but just wanted to make sure that you all know that the premium library is not solely about selling women's clothing there is a lot of stuff in there and that is by design to help you maximize your profit make more money and do it more efficiently saving time and you're just going to be a smarter seller so i hope you'll check that out so thanks so much for watching and letting me share my sales and my vacation with you if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And now it's back to work to get ready for the upcoming fourth quarter. Thanks so much for watching and have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye.